<laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. You're on live with the blondes right here on KUNX, the Unex, your new main, main channel for all things paranormal and unexplainable. Um, hey, Dee Dee. Hi. I, I just want to point out real quick, Danny just said best pregame for a show is right here. And you know what? Thanks to our Get Haunted family, they do have the best pregame for a show going on. They have the <laughs> best conversations going on over there. We we always kind of, when Didi and I come on early, we love to read what's going on over there. Yeah. There's <laughs> all sorts of jokes and, you know, inside stuff and it's good stuff. Um, We're here live with the Blondes. We have our very dear friend coming up here very soon. But before we add our guest, um, how was your weekend? Good. Yeah, everything's... Good. I saw, I don't know if anybody's checked this out on Illusions from the Side of the Road, but she got some kind of interesting, well, not kind of, you got some super interesting Great. captures from Anna yeah. May. Yeah. What I'm the heck? Really surprised. <laughs> yeah, right? I like, you know, I was just fooling around with the spirit box one day and then I was using the SLS and my yes and no boxes. And like, you saw, if you saw the video, yeah. I mean, I was getting really good responses. I was like, wow. So I've been very, if I move her around, I've been very courteous. And <laughs> uh, Yeah. Right. So are you getting like, do you feel like out when you're not doing stuff with anime, do you feel like some things are ramping up in your house? No, that's no? another reason that it surprised me. I, everything feels the same. And like, I kept waiting to see like, will I get that furniture noise again? And I didn't. So mm -hmm. I don't know. But boy, she sure wants to talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I'm going to, I, I just got back. So I will add that also to the Paranormally Blonde social medias. But if you haven't seen what we're talking about, please go check out Illusions from the Side of the Road. She's got a really cool uh, video of anime's interaction. And, you know, you guys love, we have, like, your dolls have a big fan base, Dee Dee. Like, yeah. people are very interested. Right. Yeah. So if like, go check it out. Cause it's pretty cool. Um, so I just got back, uh, just a few hours ago from a little side road trip to, uh, Pennsylvania. I was in Newcastle at the Hillview Manor for a get haunted event. I will just start off by saying it. Thank you to the people on the side, Kyle, Danny, Rob, um, Bill is here. Um, honestly, like, we are blessed to have them in our circle and i am so grateful to be in there so, like it, it, what an amazing group of people like honestly if you haven't yet gone to a get haunted event please check out their social media page for upcoming events you will not regret it it is so much fun um hillview was amazing i'm so walked out <laughs> i did all ninety thousand square feet i'm pretty <laughs> sure um i don't know if anybody i mean i, I think i was everywhere um, I'm a bit of a wanderer. So um, <laughs> there were some amazing guests there. And I just want to say thank you guys all for being so uh, kind and um, so much fun. And they're great investigators. And um, I just felt really bad because I was in my own world. I was, I, I was, I, I don't know, apparently I'm getting antisocial as I'm investigating because I just, it's like, there's so much going on. I just can't get it all into my head or out of my head. I don't know which way it's going, but um, what a great place to go. So um, you guys should check out Hillview as well. Um, they do some lives there. Um, I'm not quite sure what Donnie and Jay's team is referred to or if they're just part of Hillview, but they do lives, they do investigations, they do a couple different lives throughout the week. And they're real. And like, I think every Wednesday is like the, act, or I think it's Wednesday. I think that's what he said. They do a live um, and I they investigate, yeah, get different rooms and they go in there and there's a lot of great history um, and a lot of great resident spirits. Um, so check that out. And thank you again to get haunted. I so appreciated it. Um, I, I like, antsy to do another one. <laughs> I got to do another one soon, super soon. Um, outside of that, what else have we last, we're, what were we doing last week, Didi? Help remind me, my head is still a little foggy. Last week we interviewed Angel from That's the, right, Inside, inside the, attic. the Attic. Yeah, what a nice 
person, right? Yeah. Like what a nice human being and so well spoken. Like he was mm -hmm. so easy to talk to and I'm super excited to see he's got a couple new videos out. I can't stop watching. So he is continuing his investigation of his childhood home. Some interesting stories from him about that. Yeah. And sort of why he's investigating it. So if yeah. you didn't watch it, you can go back and, and watch it um, on Paranormally Blonde's channel. And uh, I believe also, again, you can you can check it out on uh, KUNX on their YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So tonight uh, we are going to be joined by a good friend of the blondes. And we haven't talked to him for a while. Mr. Rick McCallum. Hi there, handsome. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's a horrible thing to see on your screen all of a sudden. Oh, stop. <laughs> I was enjoying looking at you two, and all of a sudden, Aww. my face pops in the middle. Like, <laughs> scared me. Oh, well, welcome back to the blondes. Well, thank you for having me. You know, I'll be on here every single day if you want me. Yeah, we <laughs> love having our Rick. But just, yeah. just remember, Rick, we're now on KUNX, so I have to keep it to an hour. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, so we that's can't go not through. enough blonde time. No, I know we're used to having just our own schedule, and and I've had to learn how to how to bring it down to an hour. So we're going to enjoy this conversation because oh my god, how exciting! You were just in your most favorite place on the planet. Well, yeah, Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Oh I my gosh, Scotland. yeah. I so you were there for was this for? the mystic tours or yeah it was it was a uh, ghost hunting tour um yeah. it was nine days and uh, it had its ups and downs <laughs> you know uh -oh. just like just like anything else but mm -hmm. uh we had a pretty good time got to see a lot of stuff uh had some really weird things happen so you know uh i'll tell you one of them we were in Inverary jail and uh in Inverary jail they have a courtroom with mannequins in it and Mikey Thompson went in there and he had his uh, DR60 recorder. And he asked, he said, uh, so what were you tried for? And they came back, I mean, clear as a bell, murder. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, that was that was pretty interesting. I heard somebody get chased down the stairs to the oh, point where oh. I was running up the stairs to rescue him. I mean, it, that was uh, the Inverary Jail. That was a pretty cool place. Oh, wow. How long had it been since you've been to Scotland? Because I know three years. Three, three years. long years. Three long years. And the bad part was there was a girl I liked there that worked in a in a and I was just starting to get to know. And I mean just starting. Um, and I was real excited to go back there and see her. And I walked in and I said, Where is she? And they said, Oh, she moved to Ireland last month. Uh oh. So, uh oh. That sounds like the beginning of a movie. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you it's should book a trip to Ireland. <laughs> it's, it's allergies. <laughs> uh, but you can go to Ireland. Yeah. Oh, no. I didn't know we're well, going to stalk her like that, for goodness sake. <laughs> but you could be doing a ghost hunt out there. <laughs> That's right. Rick. I try, to, I, try, I try to keep my stalking to, you know, a certain level. <laughs> All right. I think, okay, so the blondes will give you a how to... 101 when you're what? when you're chasing a girl down well i gotta tell you i could really use that <laughs> <laughs> oh when there you go women, i'm as i'm as matter of fact one of the one of the chapters of my book it says when it comes to women i'm the dumbest man in america oh, and, no. and it's absolutely 100 percent true no. i mean one of the things i wrote in there i said i can have a girl that i've been married to for years who gave me a kidney bought me a cadillac and I had asked my friends, well, you think she likes me? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, we all have those moments. But as you see, Rob gave you some good advice here. He said it isn't stocking if you buy them something. So, <laughs> right? Or buy some things. Just do it. Like, I mean, is she, it's just Ireland. Isn't that right there? It's not uh, a big, no. It's a big country. I mean, <laughs> and I'm not going to go try and go into every bar to try and find her. I mean. Sometimes God, you know, saves you from what you might have done. Right. <laughs> uh huh. And he also can create adventures. So I'm not quite sure where the problem is here, but okay. So <laughs> it's a good excuse she's to gone. travel to Ireland. That's right. That's right. So it's sad. So she's gone, but you were back in Scotland. You're there on a tour. Was this a big, were there a lot of people that came? Well, there was 30 people in the tour. Oh, okay. And oh, wow. that's pretty, that's a lot for a tour, especially okay. when it's for ghost hunting, because 
you guys know big crowd like that it's hard to split up and you know get yeah. good stuff so uh but we went into a couple places that was big enough to uh like balgoni castle mm -hmm. uh, which is my favorite place uh, we didn't have a lot of time to do it though because of the way the travel went um and we also filmed right after that a thing that's going to be on another another uh, podcast so um but that was a lot of fun matter of fact that one was uh had one of the strangest things i've ever seen yeah uh, we were in the chapel and everybody said there was a uh man in there that hated women because he was deformed and okay. the women just shunned him. And we sent in one of, one of our people, the only girl we had with us, and she went in and she was sitting on the floor talking. And uh, I went in with the FLIR and then two other people, uh, Mikey Thompson and then uh, Gregor from Scottish Paranormal came in. And we were talking and turns out, I mean, he was answering the questions, right? Uh, I asked, I said, you know, if you had a chance, the girl's name was Cheryl. I said, if you had a chance to actually do something with Cheryl, what would you do? Hmm. Right. And it said, love her. Aww. Right? So then I said, what, you know, if you really had the chance, would you treat her nice? Right. And he goes, I will. Aww. So it was just this poor guy was lonely. Yeah. You know, and he really connected with Cheryl. So that was that was really oh. something. And we had like five absolute answers to the questions we had in a row. I mean, when we were done, I mean, like I was like. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I wonder if he followed her. I was going to say, does What's Cheryl have a new friend? Her? No, no, he's, he's still there because I went back the next week and oh. uh, ghost hunted again on my own. Well, I was with the Scottish Paranormal guys. We had a ghost hunt there. And one of my favorite people in ghost hunting is the Laird of, of uh, Balgoni Castle. And I was really happy because he's 92 now, but I was real happy that I got to talk to him, you know, for like a half an hour one day. And so that, that really made my trip. Aww. How long were you gone for, Rick? I was gone for a month. Wow. That's nice. Wow. And all of that was for the tour or no, some... no, the, tour, the tour is nine days and then I just went ghost hunting myself. Wow. And I would have stayed longer, but the authorities escorted me to the airport. They were done. <laughs> They're like, you, Mr. McKellen, need to go. Enough, Let's go out of the <laughs> country. Beat it. Don't come back for a year. That's right. Now, are you getting new material for another book? Yes, actually, the book is halfway done. Oh, my. And uh, it's uh, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. It really is. There's a lot of uh, personal stories. There's a lot of uh, ghost hunting things that were really interesting. So there's going to be a lot of stuff from Scotland. That's what I was waiting on to finish the book. Um, it should be pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if we won the Paranormal Book of the Year award again, but uh, <laughs> you know, can't be greedy. No, it but, can't be yeah. great, but you don't know until you do it, right? Right. Until you get another yeah. book out there. I didn't even know I won it the first time until somebody <laughs> told me. <laughs> oh, so they don't even inform you? They're just no. like, I didn't oh. even get a, I didn't even get a certificate of participation. You know, I was on a show and the guy says, "Congratulations on your book," which you know everybody says that you know because you wrote a yeah. book. And I said, "Oh, thank you." And he goes, "No, that award." And I said, "What?" And he goes, "You won the Paranormal Award Show Book of the Year." And I said, "No." He goes, yeah, and I'll send you a link. And he, he, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is cool, right? That is cool. It's a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, right? Nothing like finding out on a show, but okay. Um, all right. So I'm curious. So you've been ghost hunting a long time, and you love to go to Scotland. You, you've done some amazing locations that, as Danny is saying, Scotland's on her bucket list. I mean, who wouldn't want to go over and just the the landscape itself, right? Like, would be amazing. Castle. Well, you know what? People don't know. Scotland was voted by the uh, travel agents I okay. believe, to be the most beautiful country in the world. Yeah. How could it oh. not be? And, I mean, it is amazing. You get out there in the highlands. And, matter of fact, we, we stopped. Uh, one of the places we stayed was a place called the Stagecoach. And it was right on Loch Lomond. I mean, right, we could walk out the door, and if you walk too far, you'd fall in it. Oh. And, and I mean, we're sitting there with the moonlight and, you know, oh. the light right in front of us. And I mean, it's fantastic. Oh, Everybody wow. that stayed there was like, we're coming back just to stay here. Yeah. Yeah, there was, uh -huh. yeah, there was, there were, it was, it's a spectacular country. Uh, 
whatever the lady's name was, tell her that when she goes, let me know and I'll give her the hot spots. There you go, Danny. Yeah, Danny, remember that. If you want some good information, we'll get you hooked up with Rick McCallum and he'll he'll uh, set you straight on that. Did you, I, I'm really curious though, since you've been ghost hunting and you, you do travel, you know, a far way to do it. Do you, have you had any newer sort of experiences that you've never, like, you were just like, wow, I would have never expected that. Like, and all the experience, because you've had some in your apartment, you have shared some very interesting stories that you have had happen, but, and you've been to Scotland to do this a few times, but like, is there something like new and unexpected in your world of investigating that's really sort of, I don't know, intrigued you or surprised you? Well, I do find that uh, um, I've been doing a lot of stuff at the LAPD Museum. Okay. Um, and Mikey Thompson, Cheryl Plum come with me. Um, and sometimes we have uh, Melissa St. Clair, who's a uh, uh, psychic medium. Or sometimes we have other people come with us. But um, the uh, North Hollywood shootout room, that's where the, the big bank robbery happened right down the street from me. I actually happened to be there when it happened. And I oh thought my they, gosh. I thought they were shooting a movie because I was about two blocks away and I'm watching the cars go by and I'm hearing all the machine guns. I'm like, eh, shoot a movie. And just went home. And then they said, yeah, the bank's being robbed. I was like, oh, it's oh. just there. <laughs> right? oh. But uh, one of the things that happened um, was at the LAPD Museum. This really surprised me because we went in We went in, and we were you know, at, talking to it and trying to get some uh, EVPs. And right in the middle of when we were talking to the bank robbers, who we thought we thought we were talking to them, and Susan Slaughter asked a question. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, it came back and you heard the, the the battle sounds. You heard the machine gun, you know, the the heavy weapons going, Brrr! and then you'd hear the cops shooting back going, bam, bam, because all they had was pistols. And I just turned around and looked at him. I said, I was there. That's exactly what it sounded like. Uh -huh. right? And then being the nice, polite guy I am, turned around because it was uh, pay-per-view. I turned around and I looked at the camera and I said, dudes, all you people paid for this. You yeah. just got the money's worth. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. But uh, yeah, we yeah. did find out. Uh, Mikey is very smart in the tech things and he and I will bounce things around. So we decided to try and see if we could do something to up, you know, the, the way for them to listen and things like that. So he brought in a recording and we decided to use the gunshots as the recording. And we had one person there with a uh, SLS camera and they have two mannequins standing in there of the, of the guys that did all the shooting. And we, we turned on the, uh, the sound, you know, with the machine gun fire. And all of a sudden, both, uh, both of the uh, mannequins, boom, lit up with the SLS. And one of them got shoved outside onto the ground it looked like the other one was actually shooting at him. Oh. You know, I mean, it was it was bizarre. But that's that's one thing that really caught my attention is that there are different ways to get their attention. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, so that yeah. I'm going to be incorporating more of that in the stuff I do. I always find that interesting for people who have really, you know, sometimes we get a little set in our ways, right? Like we kind of know what we are tried and trues, right? And so mm -hmm. it can be kind of... Um, I don't know. It's intriguing to try something different and to see, like you said, now, can you up the ante here a little bit with getting evidence? Um, you know, what a great location. I mean, kind of a sad situation, but what a great location to 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 really get in there. I mean, that was when we did our uh, top 10 or top eight, top 10 favorite hauntings, top eight, I think it ended up being. Um <laughs> Mr. McCallum here shared with us that that was one of his, the LAPD museum was one yeah. of his favorite places to go. And it sounds like for good reason. I yeah, gotta check it out. Funny. Every time we go back, it gets more active. Yeah. Huh. There's actually the first, first uh, motorcycle officer that was ever killed. His name's Walter. He and I have seemed to have made a connection because the last time we were there, we had three K2 meters on the table in this conference room. And Melissa had said, I just heard somebody say Arthur. And I said, it, it was probably what said Walter. I said, because Walter's real active down here. And I said, Walter, are you here? And all three K2s just went boom. And it, all the way across the table, they were going, holy cow. And I said, yeah, Walter's Walter's pretty easy to talk to. Wow. But while we were there, we heard uh, people walking above us. You know, It's a very active place. 
Wow. I need to go there. I was going to say this. Might be, you <laughs> yeah, might need to uh, hook up with Mr. McCallum there. and Yeah. And and if you do DD, Jabril, if I said that right, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you, you will be my guest. So. Okay. Oh, thank well, you. Look at that. Rick and, and a date with a blonde. Guest. You could be my guest too, but you're a little far away. I'm a little <laughs> bit further away. I'd have to, I'd have to, uh, I'd have to set that one. That one would have to be planned for me, like a really good plan to get to California. And uh, so, okay, so you're in Scotland. You're doing your thing. You're you're getting more information for your your third book. Second. Second book. Okay. And you've already you started posting about this, correct? Because I I feel like I've seen. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of a lot of things like. Uh, uh, Christine Augustine, who is uh, you know, you know, is with another another thing. She actually took a really cool picture of me in a graveyard at, late at night, and it's like sky blue, but it's like oh. eleven at night, and yeah. and I mean just the, the colors in it are amazing, and it's only me standing looking at my K two meter in the middle of this graveyard. So I think that's going to be the cover of the new book. Love that. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah. You can't plan that, right? Right. Those have to be just captured. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. So you were out in the cemetery. I have to ask. So does Scotland have any of the same lure of of uh, lore of the fairies? Like, do you ever capture anything like that outside? No, I've never, never, no. never had anything like that. But uh, the one thing about Scotland is everything is haunted. I mean, the whole country is haunted. I mean, you go anywhere. One of the best uh, EVP things I've ever gotten, not EVP, uh, K2 uh, things, uh, was two floors below in a travel lodge in Edinburgh. And I mean, the the intelligence of the responses mm. was amazing because I, I always do trickery if I think I've got something <laughs> intelligent. And I, I asked, I said, I'm going to ask, and can you just light this up if there's more people here and how many there are? So I said two, and it goes all five lights. And the guy that's with me from the travel lodge goes, oh, and I went three, four. And he's looking at me like, dude, you know, it just went off at two. And I said five, and nothing. I said two, and it went all five lights again. And he goes, oh, <laughs> I said, yeah, you got you to double check without just saying yeah. you can just do that. So, yeah. 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 But it's, uh, and what was happening, you know, sometimes the K2 goes all the way to five and stays there. Both times it did that, I said, go back to one, and it instantly went down to one. Now, you you can have Wi-Fi interference. You can have all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff, but I can't make it go back down to, to one by myself. Right. right? No matter no. what you do. Right. right. So it, it's a very interesting piece. I mean, anybody I show it to, they just go, holy cow, that's that, that's amazing. So. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And did your so the people that were on the tour, like just regular folks could join you, right? Like that's the whole point of the tour. Yeah. And did they get did you have anybody that got like really amazing captures or evidence that they were like blown away? Well, the thing at Balgoni where where the you know was talking to Cheryl, yeah, you know, we were asking the questions. That was that really blew us away. And the two people that were filming it were people that were, you know, the producers from Ghost Hunters. So it wasn't okay. like a couple of bums. Right. Um, uh, Kat Hobson mm -hmm. actually was with me, one of my friends. And uh, Lori Dorsey who was another really good ghost hunter. My cousins were there. Uh, but we had some really good investigators there. Okay. So, I mean, uh, it wasn't bad. We could just let them go off on their own. Okay. Right? Because they were really good. So, um, yeah, it, it, it we should have had more ghost hunting in this tour. Okay. We should have, but it just didn't work out. But uh, I think everybody did the best they could. Yeah. 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 So, so there wa there wasn't enough because or things okay. changed. Got it. Things canceled. Yeah. Locations. Well, you know, I don't really want to get into it too much. Oh. But <laughs> we were we were supposed to have. A lot more ghost hunting, and it didn't happen. Okay, no. things now, happen. Uh, yeah, the, hey, they were in Scotland. For me, I would be like, yeah. I'm in Scotland. That's, That's right. fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think most people were really happy being in Scotland. Let's just, yeah, let's just put it that way. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I would have liked to see more ghost hunting in the tour. So, huh. so do you feel like being in Scotland and ghost hunting in the U.S. is it similar? 
or do you feel like there's more activity in Europe or here? No. In, in Scotland, it is much more active. It's much more intense. Huh. I mean, here you'll get activity and stuff like that. Over there, it will just jump you. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's exciting. You go in there and you say, there's somebody here. Well, yeah, mate. Right. Yeah. I have a thing there from uh, the Frank's box where you see me asking and say, is there anything in the castle we should be afraid of? And then with a Scottish accent, it says the energy. Oh, so, yeah. So, I mean, you'll get straightforward answers from the Scots. You know? Wow. Mm -hmm. huh. Um, okay, so when you travel overseas like that, how, and I don't know how much equipment you bring, do you bring a lot of equipment or are there, is there equipment there that's ready for you to use? Well, I bring equipment. I, I don't bring a lot of real advanced stuff. I bring stuff that I can carry with me. Okay. Um, but I am also a member of Scottish Paranormal. Okay. And those guys have everybody's equipment known to man. Okay. So when I get over there, I do go ghost hunting with them. Right. You know, and we'd actually gone to Ireland to go hunt and I almost died. I think I told you that. So, yeah. So, no, that girl that's over in Ireland, she's safe. I'm not going back there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Not even for a girl. <laughs> no, things try to kill me. I get the hint. Okay. Not to that castle. <laughs> that's right. She must not be a blonde. She's not. There oh. you go. There's your answer. It was blonde. <laughs> it was different. That's right. Um, okay, but I'm curious about when you're bringing, because I've not traveled overseas with equipment. I've not done ghost hunting overseas. How easy is it to get through? I mean, do you just pack it in your suitcase and nobody cares? Or do they check and go, what the hell is this? I never <laughs> pack it in my suitcase. Okay. I always carry it on board. Uh, I, I always have uh, two K2 meters. I always okay. have two voice recorders. Uh, I always take a night vision camera. Okay. Um, I also take uh, my FLIR. Um, so, I mean, that pretty much covers, you know, the gauntlet, you know, the yeah. voice recorders and the K2s and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, I've, I've been out in the middle of the night, like, you know, two in the morning, sitting, you know, right outside the graveyards of Roslyn, mm -hmm. Roslyn oh. Chapel and Roslyn Castle. And I mean, you, you just can't beat Scotland. I mean, if you want to go into a graveyard in the middle of the night and go sun, go ahead. They don't care. Oh, uh, that's... Care. If you want to go into an abandoned castle, go ahead. Yeah. You know, if you fall down and you break your arm, you go in there and the judge will say, so let me see now, you trespassed on somebody's property. You fell down and you broke your leg in a place you weren't invited and it's his fault. Yeah. <laughs> Case dismissed. Yeah. yeah. They don't, there's no nonsense. You know, you're, you're a big boy, yeah. you know, you fall down the stairs. <laughs> you know. So do, do they have as much, uh, vandalism so to speak i feel like no. that's the issue here right mm -hmm. like i feel like we just yeah. can't help ourselves when we come here and if something's abandoned or a cemetery i mean people just can't help but to knock things over or to spray yeah. paint or whatever it doesn't no. happen over there no you have to know the scottish people okay they're very proud people and they're very kind Okay. Uh, just recently, you're starting to see some of the younger people putting graffiti up on walls and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. was never there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you really notice about Scotland, and I've always told people this, when you're walking around in the city and you see a family, yeah. they're holding hands. Okay. Huh. When they go down to the beach, they're all together at the beach. I mean, they do things as a family. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a totally different vibe than what we have here. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to show you what it's like, I went to, you know, I stay at different places. I, you know, I don't want to stay in one place. And I was only at one, one place for one day and another place for one day because the British Open was was on. Mm -hmm. and the British Open is just jacks the prices up, right? And both places, because I've been there so many times, neither one of them charged me. Oh, wow. I mean, the people there are just extraordinarily nice. I mean, they really are. In my book, I talk about how a lady let me use her house for 10 days. I remember that story. Who does that? Yeah. No <laughs> one here. Know, <laughs> much less stay at my house. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> right. 10 days. And I'd never met this lady. Wow. So, I mean, they're just, they're really, really kind people. Huh, it, you weren't afraid that they were like luring you in for <laughs> something or? 
Well, the lady was like 75. I figured. Oh. Was, <laughs> okay. You know, there you go. <laughs> uh, she, was, she was actually going to England to visit her sister. Okay. Yeah. And, and I become really good friends with the family. I mean, they're, they're really nice. So oh, yeah. that's what I'm saying. One of the things that people don't think about Scotland, they go, Oh, it's so pretty. There's Loch Ness. There's, you know, St. Andrews, there's all this stuff. The people are what makes Scotland. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and you, you got to remember these people came from the most bloodthirsty clans in the history of the world. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they were duking it out, stabbing each other. I tried to explain to somebody when we were on the on the tour, and they said, "Yeah, you know the wars back then." I said, "Yeah, but the wars back then were different." Yeah, they were fought face to face. You could smell what the guy had for lunch. Right. I said, "You had to look him in the face when you did him in." I said, "It it was a really brutal place." Yeah. So, I mean, when when they fought the English, it was it was on. Trust me. So, do you think some of that sort of I mean, that's passionate, right? Like, yeah. so do you think that sort of helps feed into the paranormal over there? Oh, oh yeah. I think yeah. I think it just absolutely permeates just about every square foot of the place. Mm -hmm. The only place I didn't find anything, and I really expected to, there was a uh, the Battle of 1303 in Roslyn. And uh, there were 30,000 English came and 8,000 Scots mm -hmm. fought them. And okay. the 8,000 Scots destroyed the English. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they they say it's the most bloody battle in history. Mm -hmm. And almost nobody knows about it. Okay. And if you remember when I fell and just tore up my knee, mm -hmm. I was researching that battle and I was walking through the woods and fell. So I think I'm like the last casualty of the Battle of 1303. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. In, in, the, in the battlefield. And the guy wow. that rescued me when I came walking out and gave me a ride back to the hotel, uh, is actually, you know, manages one of the farms there that is was the battlefield. So he and I went out in the middle of the night and were ghost hunting the whole thing. And I did not get a blip on the K2, nothing. Mm. You know. And, you know, there were like 35,000 people died in this. Almost everybody in this thing died and nothing. And, wow. you know, and it just made me think, I was like, you know, when you die for a cause, maybe you go... Yeah. But it was actually, you know, I wrote the book. I said, uh, rest in peace, gentlemen. Yeah. But, interesting. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, that, somebody should write a movie about this because nobody knows about it. Yeah. They yeah. sent 30,000 guys. The king sent 30,000 guys to kill one man, one oh. of the players who was big in the Templar stuff. Mm -hmm. And because he was going to marry a, a girl that his friend wanted, and it would have get, been a political marriage for the king. So he sent 30,000 soldiers to go kill this guy. Yeah. And he, because he knew the Scots would put up, you know, if he saw the English coming in, they'd put up a fight. But they they say the only the only English that survived were the really fast ones. Yeah. Because, you know, they just, they tore them to shreds. But I, I had heard, uh, and maybe somebody that's listening to me, I can tell if this is true or not, because I've researched it and I get mm. conflicting things. They said just as the... Uh, two sides were going to, you know, face off. This one army pulled up with the Scots and said, uh, we thought we'd give you a hand, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, really? What's your name? He goes, William Wallace. So Braveheart showed up. Oh. oh. Guy. And then just as they were ready to go, a whole bunch of other soldiers came up wearing white sheets <coughs> with a cross right through the middle of it. The Knights Templar showed okay. up. Wow. So when you got William Wallace and, and the Knights Temple that show up to help you, yeah, you got a pretty good shot at women. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe you should do this movie, Rick. You're a movie yeah. guy. Actually, I've thought about writing it because it's a. You know what? Almost nobody knows about it. Even yeah. the people <laughs> in Roslyn, most of them don't know about it. It happened hmm. right down the way. There's a monument to it. Yeah. Wow. And nobody really knows the, the real story. Why do you think it's not talked about, though? Like, why do you think it's something they don't want to discuss? Well, you know, it's it's really the, the reason is they think that the king of England didn't ever want it publicized because they got their ass whacked so bad. Sure. Right. And uh, the fact that why he sent all these people over there just to get one of the Sinclairs. Yeah. Right? So that's a story that I've heard when I researched it. But uh, wow. It, so did they get the guy? No. Did they, Oh, so he lived. 
Yeah, you live. Um, <laughs> the Sinclairs, the Sinclairs are the ones who built Roslyn Chapel. Okay. So I mean, uh, yeah, he was around. The whole Sinclair family was like all Templars the whole the whole time. Yeah, he's oh. a slippery sucker, huh? He just had that many people after him. He's like, and did he get the girl? Yeah, as far as, yeah, I think he did. That's uh, the total movie. <laughs> but, but, but I don't know if Sinclair was actually involved in the battle. Mm. Well, he should have been. <laughs> well, you would think, but they never mentioned him. Uh -huh. you know? So he may have been in there. I don't know, but you know, he never gets a mention. Once William Wallace showed up, everybody just went, oh, yeah. let's talk about him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. After Braveheart came out and stuff like that. But it's and, and it's actually the bloodiest battle between the Scots and English in history. And huh. nobody knows about it. Interesting. I don't know. I'm cool. I'm feeling a Hollywood Ghost Hunter production. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm thinking, but you realize how much money it would cost to have 38,000 people duking it no, out? No, you, you just <laughs> CGI those people, you know? Yeah. Oh, and yeah, yeah, that, I can do makeup more. for you. There you go. You got yeah, a Hollywood really, yeah. makeup artist right there. We can. I'm sure we can find you the, the main girl to play the role. Uh, yeah, that's a great question, D. Who? What, what year? What, what year was this, Rick? Uh, nice try, D. Who? But it was 1303. Oh, <laughs> interesting. It's called the Battle of Roslyn. Mm. R O S L I N. Yeah, look at that. 1303. Remember that year? <laughs> do you remember? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and, and, and actually, you know that the Knights Templar were wiped out in 1307. Oh. oh. On on uh, Friday the thirteenth, which is where Friday the thirteenth comes from. That Look, be, really? Yeah. There you go, people. You're welcome for all this amazing history and yeah. little tiger tidbit you're learning right here today. And uh -huh. one, of the, one, of the, one of the highlights that happened while I was in Scotland, uh, right near Roslyn, there was a and it's well known. It's not conjecture. It was actually a Knights Templar headquarters long okay. after they were supposed to have been wiped out. And it's in a town called Temple because that's where the temple was. Okay. And I was fortunate enough that Greg Stewart from uh, Scottish Paranormal drove down and took me over there because he knew where it was. And I tell you, as soon as you walked in, and he said the same thing too, I just looked at him. I said, I think I'm supposed to be here. Oh. And he goes, and he goes, I always get that feeling too when I get here. And I said, I, uh. I don't know why I don't get that. Usually I feel like I'm not supposed to be anywhere. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I just told him, I said, yeah, they're just... I just feel like I'm really supposed to be here. So I don't Perhaps. know if maybe somewhere back in my old days that, you know, I was out there slugging it out, you know. I was going to say, Rick, yeah. maybe this whole battle, maybe this is something that just is a part of your blood. Maybe. Yeah. Well, well you do know that the, one of the very most famous swordsmen in the history of Scotland was my relative, Zachary McCullum. And oh. there was a man, this is another story. There was a man called Alistair the Devastator who was seven foot tall. Red hair and a big beard, and he had a giant sword, and they would hire him to command armies. He was a mercenary. And he would go out there and he would just lay waste to the entire first thing. I mean, he just brought their <laughs> so and they called him the devastator because he never lost. I mean, other armies quit when they saw him coming. Oh. Well, they sent uh, him to go take the Campbell Castle. And the McCullums are part of the Campbell clan. Okay. And you know, he came up with his army and a bunch of people from the town came out to defend the Campbells. And he said, here's what we're going to do today. And he takes his giant sword and he sticks it in the ground. He goes, I'm going to fight one of you. If you win, my army leaves. If we win, we get the castle. He says, otherwise, I'm going to kill every one of you. Right. And finally, he says, uh, so do you have a champion? And nobody came out. And finally, one guy walked out and he was a student from St. Andrews University. Right. And he came out and, and uh, Alistair said these words. He goes, oh, if there's anything, three things the Campbells can count on. It's uh, stone, uh, limestone and a McCullum. So this oh. guy, Zachary McCullum, took him on and actually beat him in per, in, in combat. Oh. And everybody was just like, oh, Alistair lost. Right. Because he desorted him. Now, the, when you desort somebody, the honorable thing is not to kill him. OK. Right. So. Alistair, doing the honorable thing, picked up his sword and took his army and left. Mm -hmm. So they went into battle again against the, I think it was the McLeods, not sure. Uh, and Zachary actually killed seven people in a row, you know, in combat. And he went in uh, 
to take out the clan chief, and somebody killed him from behind with a scythe. Oh. You know, but they said he was by far the best swordsman anybody would ever seen. Wow. So, why don't, so, yeah. you, why don't why you live there? History? Yeah, why don't you live there yet, Rick? Well, because you're only allowed to stay there, you know, three months at a time. Okay, but you can't take up residency? Like no. you could no, no, they they don't allow you in. No, you can stay there three months at a time. Now, if I could wow. find myself a a sassy lassie with a classy chassis from from uh that might want to, you know, hook up with me and, you know, uh, share my name, then uh, I could stay. Huh. Interesting. And then Colin would return. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> I if love you, that. But yeah, I was going to say you have like your fam, your lineage is there. Yeah. They don't care. Uh, that, well, they, they do care, but you can only be uh, one generation removed. Ah. Uh, and like three generations back were the last ones that lived there. Okay. So, Ireland's the same. I can move to Ireland because my mom was born in Ireland, so I oh. could actually live there. Yeah. And would you, Dee? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you Have kidding? You been to Ireland? Huh? Have you been I've there? I've never been, which is yeah, so Ireland, sad. Ireland is nice. Scotland is better. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, no, no. no, the difference is uh, Ireland has a lot of industrial stuff. Okay. Scotland looks like it did in the 1700s most. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Glasgow looks like Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. but the rest of this, you know, everything else is like old time buildings and everything else. Cleveland so, is is that a bad thing or? Oh, it looks like a big city. Okay. You know? <laughs> it's just interesting just that you chose I Cleveland. Cleveland because you know. <laughs> It's in that state you like so much. Yeah, well, I, you have Ohio on the brain because he thought I lived in Ohio, and that is just not the case, folks. I do not live in Ohio. I'll drive through it. I will not live Although there. Although I was just in Ohio when I went to the old Paulding Jail. I, You know what? And I wanted to and actually make way, that trip. And I do believe I invited you. So you, you did. And let me tell you something. That unfortunately came at the tail end of a six day road trip. And I didn't know if I could get away with saying I'm going away again for the weekend. So <laughs> I could not say yes to that one, but you'll be back there, right? I don't know. I hope so. Okay. Well, they, next time. I, they didn't, they didn't run me out of town on a rail or anything. <laughs> no, so they, were, they were like, that's it for Mr. McCallum. Yeah, no you're, <laughs> you're out, buddy. You've been here. <laughs> uh, okay. So what is like in the future for Mr. Rick McCallum? Do you have anything going on in Good old Hollywood movie wise, or are you? Well, well, movie wise, I've pretty much stopped doing movies. Okay. And the reason is my knee is so bad mm. that when you go to do stunts in a movie, yeah, right, it never ends up being what they originally said you were going to do. Okay. So you know, if they want to do a fight scene and throw me around and stuff like that, I could do that, right? But if they said, okay, run up the stairs and uh, nope, oh. you know, run down the stairs, nope. You know, Aww. and I wouldn't, I would not go to a set where that might happen and embarrass the stunt coordinator, you know? So besides that, I'm like, you know, old and decrepit and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, You're so. not best, but best stunt man in Hollywood right here, Rick McCallum. Yeah. Uh, what about any future paranormal explorations? Do you have anything big on the horizon coming up? Uh, well, actually going back to Scotland pretty in the not too distant future, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, oh. Yeah. I'm also going to go to Wales and, and, and uh, England. Okay. And I'm thinking about going to Portugal. Oh. To a town called Tomar. Okay. And Tomar has a very big Knights Templar temple there. Oh. And I really like the Knights Templar. I really do. So it's, it's you know, I kind of run around and that'd be fun to see. Well, I was just going to yeah. say now that would be, I feel like going to Scotland and going to Portugal, like those are very different investigations, no? Yeah. But you're going to similar situations with the Templar. Yeah. So um, I would just think those would be very, very unique and different experiences. Oh, they would. Absolutely. Um, because most of the Templar stuff that was in Portugal yeah. was more of the stuff where they were the money men and things like that. OK. Uh, in Scotland, they were the, you know, they were pretty much the, the brawlers. OK. You know? So, but, but Scotland has such a rich history. I mean, it, it really does. Everywhere you go, you go to the Highlands, you go to the locks and stuff like that. There's so much history and you can feel it. I, I hate to say that because everybody tries to say stuff, but when you're going through these towns, you just feel like, wow. 
Yeah. Cat Hobson, Hobson was so uh, so absolutely cool. We would be somewhere, and she'd be looking around. She'd go, "I love here." <laughs> oh, she's such a good person. She's I so fun. Him. Yeah, she's so fun. Um, there you go. What about Spain? Rob is saying you should check out Toledo, Spain. Uh, well, I could go to Toledo, Ohio. I mean, <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Great question by D Hoot once again. Yeah, she says, do you investigate famous people, places, and things in Hollywood? Well, yeah, I do, actually. Uh, one of the places I go to many, many times is the Omen House. Mm. Mm, and the, yeah. Omen House, the Omen House is right next to where the Tate family was was murdered. Uh, a lot of the stuff that came from that place is in the LAPD Museum. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, the stuff from the North Hollywood is there. The, uh, the Black Dahlia stuff is in there. So you get all these, the energy from all those mm -hmm. famous cases. So it's, the LAPD Museum is uh, definitely a hot spot. Yeah. Uh, I've also done the Houdini Mansion. Oh, that would be really interesting to check yeah. out. Yeah. Well, I actually got something that was was kind of a surprise. Uh, we had, me and one of my guys, not, not it was a cane or RA, it was another one of my guys. We walked in into this basement thing, and this huge shadow went in front of us. So I said, come on. And he, the other guy's a little bit bigger than me. So we went back and we walked in and walked in. We couldn't cre create any shadow at all. So we we're like, okay, that's strange. And then there were two two double beds or two queen size beds actually, and I went over and I sat uh, my K2 and my voice recorder on the on the bed and I went over and I said because we've been walking all day and I, I sat down on this futon, and Ed the guy that was there he actually played one of the Visigoths in the Capital One commercials, and I doubled him in, in Hatchet too, but anyway um, he picks up the uh, the K2 meter and he walks into the bathroom, and as he's walking he says I'm going to get a uh, base reading. And when I was listening back to the tape, right, I hear I'm going to get a base reading. And then I hear, no, mm. right. And I was like, now that's, that's creepy. right?" Yeah. just by the way it said no. Yeah. But when I was on the bridge at Roslyn with some other ghost hunters and somebody said, have you gotten any good EVPs? I said, yeah, check this one out. And the guy goes, oh, mate, that's the best one I've ever heard. And I said, well, the no is pretty good. He goes, no, what it says before that. And I was like, what? Yeah. Right. What's it say before that? And he goes, listen, there's four words. So I got my head jammed in there and I, I can hear. No, there is four words there. I said, do you know what it says? And he told me and I said, all right. So I went back and I, I got another thing. I had the Scottish paranormal guys run it through their audio and crank it up. And you know what it says? It says exactly what the guy told me. You, you hear, you hear Ed say, can I get a base reading? And then you hear, get back here, punk. Oh no! Right, so something in that place was yeah. not friendly. Huh. Oh, and I'll tell you another one that I got that was really interesting. Uh, you know, the bird cage in, in Tombstone, Arizona. Yeah. yeah, I had ghost hunted there. It was just me and the owner. Right, it's it's amazing that things like this happen that I get to do that. People, the first thing I said in my book was my only superpower is people are really nice to me. You're a good guy, Rick. Yeah, that's why. Well, but they don't know me, and they still are nice to me. So it's it's pretty cool. But anyway, I set set my uh, camera down, my night vision camera down in the poker room. Now the poker room's famous because it had the world's longest poker game over eight years consecutively. <clears throat> in other words, <throat> not when they opened up the next day. They never closed. The game never stopped for over eight years. Wow. Because as soon as somebody got up, somebody else sat down, and they just huh. played and played and played. But there were a lot of shootings and things down there. Okay. So I put my camera down and I walked upstairs. And as I was walking up the stairs, I said, uh, did you get killed down here? Walked up another one. I said, did you kill somebody? Hmm. And when I, when I got back and I was listening to my, uh, about a month later, lazy <laughs> bum that I am, I'm listening to the tape. And uh, I was really, really surprised because you hear me and Billy come down and we're talking. And it's it's very short piece of tape. And... Uh, Right in the middle of it, you hear a man with a Mexican accent. And I say Mexican because Mexico is like four feet away yeah. from Tombstone. Right? Yeah. So a lot of the people that were in Tombstone were actually Mexican citizens. right? But anyway, you hear the, this voice, and it says very clearly, I had to, oh. with, a, with a Mexican accent. So last time I went, I called up Billy. I said, Billy, look what I found. And I sent him the tape, and he goes, wow. 
I said, I'm going to be there in about half an hour. Can I come in for a little bit? And he goes, if you can get here in about 15 minutes. And I, he says that you can get in just in this between two ghost hunting groups. Uh -huh. So I went in and put my voice recorder on the, on the uh, same place. Yeah. And I said, uh, and take a guess. How long do you think I got till I got another voice from this guy? Another answer. Two minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know. 15. 38 seconds. Thir oh. oh. This guy likes to talk. I got on there and I said, uh, last time I was here, I asked if, uh, you know, you had killed anybody and you said I had to. I said, now, can you tell me if you ever saw anybody else get, get killed? And you hear, yes. So I mean, 38 seconds till this guy talked to me. <laughs> so yeah. wow. back there, this guy is very verbal. Yeah. I mean, and I have them both on tape. So see, even the dead like, oh. like actually, actually, you know, the dead like me better than the live people do. So I'm good. Oh, stop! You just said everybody was really friendly to you. <laughs> Don't even try that. Friendly to me too. Don't even try. Don't even try. <laughs> Do you know? You really think you're the first girl that's ever said, "Don't even try to me." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking oh. about just today. <laughs> oh, Rick, you're so silly. Um, oh, yeah. I'm interested in this. Uh, where's I don't know where Marilyn Monroe's former home is, but it's haunted. I'm guessing you're mentioning that because it's in L.A. It Do is you know? in L.A. It's actually oh. uh, it's not in Beverly Hills. Um, it's actually a very small, you know, like a cottage place. Okay. Uh -huh. And I have heard that it's haunted, but I've also heard that the Hotel Roosevelt, you see her in the mirror. Oh, yeah. I've also heard that you hear Montgomery Clift playing his, uh, you know, this goes back to the celebrity things, that you hear Montgomery Clift playing his yeah. uh, his bugle from when he was in uh, oh. from Year to Eternity, I think it was. Okay. You know, so um, there's a lot of uh, celebrity stuff in, in Hollywood. I'd yeah. be very interested in, in going to her home because I, as a teenager, I was obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. I mean, like I watched all her movies and she was everything to me. And so that would be really interesting to go yeah. to her home and investigate well, the whole, that. The whole story of Marilyn Monroe is, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Marilyn Monroe's stuff is at the LAPD Museum. Oh. Now yeah. there's some people that think she was killed because of the Kennedys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, other people think that she was killed because she was just getting ready to say something about UFOs. That's the oh. conspiracy. I've been listening to some of that. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know that she was having an affair with both Bobby and John. Yeah. And people have a tendency to try and make their girlfriends, you know, mm -hmm. they will listen to what I know. Yeah. You know, and yeah. could have got her killed. Yeah. Well, something did. There's, there are some very interesting podcasts out there about some of the new new thoughts and theories. And oh, I'm send them my way. Well, the one thing that you really need to know is that Thomas Noguchi said she died from a nebutal overdose. Yeah. And she had no pill, you know, the things that, you know, the capsules. Right. There were none of them in her stomach. Yeah. Mm. So actually what they said is, and, and I uh, de um, private detective said that he had been taping secretly her room trying to get stuff on both the mob and the Kennedys. Oh. And they heard he heard two people go in there and heard it wrestling with it. And they said that they actually gave her a uh suppository. Oh. So that it didn't show in the stomach. Oh, interesting. Wow. Now, when I was at the LAPD Museum, um, wow. Melissa St. Hilaire is a very talented uh, psychic medium. And I really like her because she, when she goes in a room, she doesn't find something in every room. Right. You know, I really like her. So when she actually says something, you listen to her. Right. You know? Yeah. But she's sitting there and she's going, oh, the blonde, she, she, she's, she's being murdered, the blonde. And they're going, all the people are going, oh, that's Sharon Tate. Because all the yeah. first stuff is there too. And I said, I don't think that's Sharon Tate. She goes, two men in her bedroom. And I said, that's not Sharon Tate. Yeah. Right. And I said, that's Marilyn Monroe. Right, because everybody said these two guys came in and killed her, and that's what she was picking up on without mm -hmm. even knowing it. So, and she got in so deep that I actually went over and shook her out of it. Oh you know, wow! Huh. Rick, gosh. you always have amazing stories. I hope you and Dee Dee can pick a good time to to do an investigation. That would be a great uh, 
a great little, we'll do a live with you guys, even yeah. if it's just a quick introduction and, and look around, um, I, that would be an amazing collaboration to see. So, well, um, when I do, when I do those, I'm usually uh, there with another company. Okay. And I don't want to say their name because I'm talking on your show. Right. <laughs> right? So, um, but yeah, they're very kind people to me and they will definitely allow me to have the lovely DD oh. come in as a guest. There you go. Awesome. Date with the blonde sounds like to me. <laughs> Love who it. Turned, who turns down blondes anyway? That's right. No, who does? You, you do need a brunette in the middle so you can all stand like this. Up That's side. right. I know. I know. <laughs> you got the fairer hair. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's we. Yes, I do. We do have the fairer hair. It's my new. It's my new thing. I have to be feathered up. I trying to bring the seventies <laughs> back. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really trying to keep my hair on top of my head. I'm getting where I'm, <laughs> where I'm shampooing with super glue. Nice. Oh, stop. Um, good. Yeah, there you go. Maybe we can get get haunted out there too. Road road trip there from Pennsylvania go. to California. Rick, we are looking forward to this this new book to come out. Um, yeah. When are we thinking it's coming out? Well, I'm actually having a book signing at Dark Delicacies here in Burbank. Okay. For the, for the first one. And I'd kind of like to have it done by then, but I don't think I'm going to because it's October 1st. <laughs> you better and, know. Uh, one. <laughs> yeah. And getting it, you know, formatted, you know, yeah. edited and everything else. So I'm um, also doing a uh, thing. Uh, actually, it's October 2nd. So that wouldn't help much. <laughs> Where I'm a featured speaker at uh, the Orange County Paracon. Yeah. So, oh. There's an Orange County Paracon? There is. I, well, they're hard to find. Huh? I want to go to that. You should come. I will. Give me the information. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. This is gonna happen. We're gonna start getting some West Coast, like represented right here on the blondes. It is time to get more West Coast out there, so we know things like the Orange County Paragon. <laughs> like what the heck? Like yeah, Dee didn't actually, know. It's actually October first and second in Orange County, California. Okay. There. There you go. Well, That's let's right let's look door. that up. Yeah, <laughs> let's look that up. Uh, Miguel, Rick, Henry San Miguel is the guy who was putting it on. Oh, we're gonna look all this up. Maybe there's yeah. something on social media. Rick, it is always such a pleasure. I'm so glad that you're a friend of the blondes, and you always say yes when we're like, "Hey, you want to come on?" Yeah. And you always are like, "I'm on. I'll be on." So we love to catch up with you. We'll have to maybe add you into the mix for a little after party soon, like a little game playing. If you'd like to come and play a game with the blondes and little fruit, there you go, a little dance party <laughs> maybe. Always, always, guys. On the side, thank you guys for your constant support and love. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, next week, we have a, a really fun guest, uh, Mr. Corbin Bentley. And he is an influencer, a paranormal investigator. And now he is going to be a model. And he is a beautiful man that I can't wait to introduce to you all. I, if you don't already know him. I'm a little older. I don't know all these influencers, but oh my gosh, he has such a great personality and does amazing things. So you guys are going to meet him next Monday along with the blondes and uh, past that. We've got a couple other, I think we've got October. We got it or October. Now I've got October on the brain. Thanks guys. <laughs> we've got August. We're just in August. Uh, we got August filled. So this is turning out to be an amazing month. And uh, like always, we will see you guys next Monday right here on KUNX. And uh, Dee Dee, you have an amazing night. Rick, thank you once again for your time. We always love our time with you. Well, how many times have I ever said no to you guys? I know, never. I'm so excited. <laughs> I get out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work out a game night. You guys are gonna want to come to that one because yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll let them loose on the blonde channel. Then you know, <laughs> don't have to worry, right? October 2nd, Dee Dee. Okay. There you go. All right, you guys, you watch out for any kind of crazy weather out there. There's, uh, I don't know if you have anything going on in California. You guys kind of have it easy. Yeah, except for it was 100 yesterday. Yeah, yeah the heat. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get and thunderstorms. I don't have an air conditioner in my bedroom. So, at night, you know, I feel I wake up, I look like a hot dog. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. With that, we're going to send you guys <laughs> off for a good night and we will see you next Monday. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thanks, ladies. <laughs>